Welcome back today on Danny Robertson Music. We're going to talk about one of the scariest things that can ever exist in a live performance. Welcome back to Danny Robertson Music, where we try to help you become the best possible performer that you can be on any stage you choose. I'm Danny Robertson. Thank you for joining me again this week. We're going to have fun today, and as mentioned, we're talking about one of my biggest pet peeves when it comes to live performance, and that is dead space. Essentially what Dead Space is, is that time between when a song ends to the time when the new song begins. That gap in between the two. If you're not doing something between those two, that is what you call Dead Space. And that is a huge, huge pet peeve of mine. Here's what can happen when a band or a musician or a singer leave space between songs and don't do anything with that space. The first thing you do is you kind of lose your audience. Their engagement stops because you've stopped engaging them. If there's nothing happening on stage for your audience to see or hear, you have a chance of losing them during that period of time. So they may become distracted, disengage, and stop paying attention to you entirely. Second thing that happens is you totally destroy the energy level that you've worked so hard to create. When there's nothing happening on stage, you're basically taking all that energy that you've worked so hard to build and you're just saying bye to it. The third thing that happens when you put dead space in your show is you could be working towards creating this emotional arc of like either fun or love or excitement. But as soon as you stop a song and let go of the time frame between the songs, you're basically killing that ability to create an emotional arc. You could be growing your audience to feel a lot of love for you and then you just stop and there goes all the attention. If you want to keep that emotional roller coaster going for your audience, you have to keep them engaged and adding dead space in your show will completely kill that. And the last thing is that every time you put dead space into your show, you're increasing the negative impact on their overall experience for your audience. It shows that you're unprofessional and unprepared. You do not know how to keep the show going. You do not know how to engage your audience in between when you're just playing music. Learning to overcome dead space is key to becoming a better performer. Your ability to keep your audience engaged throughout your entire show, whether you're playing music or not, tells your audience whether or not they're having a good time at your performance. So let's talk about some things you can do to overcome dead space. So I think the first thing that we need to talk about when it comes to addressing dead space is the concept of being ready for the next song. Now, ironically, there's a concept in golf that really applies here. There's two ways that you'll typically see golfers play golf. There's the version that you see on TV, which is whoever got the lowest score on the previous hole is the first one to go on the next hole, right? But then what you see in most casual golf situations is the concept of ready golf. What that means is the previous hole was done, we've moved to the next hole, and it doesn't matter who scored the best, it's whoever is ready to play should start the next hole of play. That works really well in the concept with musicians and bands. If you get to the end of a song, it makes a lot of sense to start thinking about what the next song is and what you need to play before the last song ends. It's not hard to do. You just kind of have to go, okay, so we're getting close to the end of this song. Now what do I need to have ready for the next song? It eliminates that gap where you have to think about that during the break between the two songs. Try to think of it while you're playing the previous song. What's next? What do I need to be ready to play? Think of it like this. If you're in the last chorus of the last song, you're playing the song, 
I'm just coming up with one on the spot. And you get to this point and you're going, okay, what's the next thing I'm gonna play? Okay. And we end the song. And. If you do something like that, you don't really have to have that space between the two songs. And it comes off much more prepared and much more professional. So use the ready golf method. It can be just you or it can be your entire band. The better you are at it, the more consistent you'll be at switching from song to song with a fluid motion. Now on a slightly more laid back version of the ready golf method, you can basically put in the beginning of the next song as a musical interlude. If you're thinking about that next song, you can have one player just kind of start to play the next. You can have the next song kind of started without the full band being ready for it. All you're doing is having an introduction to the next song, and you don't necessarily need to have the whole band ready to do that. You could call that a musical interlude, and basically what you're doing is you're filling the gap with something that the audience can pay attention to. It doesn't fully eliminate dead space, but it does give you something that helps you transition from one song to the next. The third thing to do with eliminating dead space is probably the most obvious. Get the crowd involved. Interact with them in some way, shape, or form. And there are many ways to do this, but I challenge you to try to think about that a little bit deeper because most of the time, bands and musicians do the same exact three to five things and they really don't know how to expand upon that. Let me give you an example of this. The first thing I'd suggest you do is start asking your audience questions. Now, what's the most obvious question that most bands or instrumentalists or musicians would give to an audience? What's the first thing they'd say, usually at the beginning of the show? Yeah, how's everybody doing tonight? It's a great starter question because most audiences are used to hearing that question. Now, where we go wrong is the second half of that. How's everybody doing tonight? Yay, we're good, everything like that. We are, enter band name, and we're from this city, and come and see us. You can see us, find us on this website, and we're going to play some music for you tonight. Here's the next song. You've kind of missed a big opportunity right there. You could have taken that first question and gotten to know your audience a little bit. How's everybody doing here tonight? So what's everybody here for? Are we here with family? Are we here with friends? Is there a birthday in the house? Are you going out and doing something fun afterwards? Or did you do something fun today? You can ask more questions. How many of you have seen this band before? Are you gonna get up and dance? Are there kids in the house? Are you having fun? There's lots of things that you can ask and some of it will work well with your audience and some of it won't but you need to be fearless in trying to ask those questions. Instead of treating that part of your dead space like a presentation, treat it like a conversation. What would you wanna know out of your audience? It's a good thing to create that vibe that we are not just a separated band and audience, we are a collective unit that is having fun together tonight. Let's talk about the fourth way that you can help eliminate your dead space in your show. I think one that doesn't get used as much as it could is creating a visual effect on stage. I'm gonna show you an example of this, but I need to stop the camera for a second to give you that idea. Let's say we create some kind of visual environment like this, and then we add maybe a special effect like a fog machine or a dry ice machine, and then you can combine it with some kind of simple sounds and just kind of play it over whatever you want to say or do or let it just transition. 
So as of right now, I'm not really picking anything. I'm just kind of playing something that can keep going and I can switch as I see fit and I can maybe talk to the audience in the process. All of this is just a bunch of seventh chords that I'm just kind of playing. And it's a nice synthy long sound. So you get the idea, you're creating this emotional moment that really may have nothing to do with your live performance other than it's a transition, you know? And this might create that emotional feeling of the song that you're trying to transition into. So you're creating a mood by just adding a few special effects, changing your lighting a little bit, maybe talking a little bit, getting a deeper voice and talking a little bit softer or something like that. Talking about how much, how much fun it is to have you guys here as part of our show. We love that you're participating and dancing along. We're gonna do a slow song now or something like that. So you get how this can kind of, over time, basically just help you build to the next song. So there's lots of ways that you can do that. You can use fog machines and dry ice machines. You can use lighting. You can use things like video screens to help tell your story and transition one song to the next. Visual effects are a great tool that I don't think a lot of bands and musicians and performers are using as effectively as you could be. Take a look into that. See what else you can come up with. Get a little bit creative, okay? The last thing I want to talk about is how to get your audience engaged in a way that they participate in your show. It's not just about talking with them, it's about getting them up and moving and being involved in the active participation of your show. So one example of a way that you can do that is maybe take a dance break with the band. I've done this before on set breaks where for the first five to 10 minutes after we stop playing the show, we'll get up and dance in front of the audience to whatever music they've got playing. And it might be that we've even choreographed some things to particular songs. Doesn't have to be anything fancy, it just has to show that you're having fun on stage. Another way to effectively do this is to actually invite parts of your audience to participate with you on stage. Getting some of your audience members up on stage do two very important things. First, by getting a few people up on stage, you get friends and family members and anybody that's associated with those people to jump up and participate in the show with them it gets the audience more actively engaged in your show. Secondly, it teaches the rest of your audience that they may get to participate in your show too if they want to, but they have to be active participants. They have to get up in front of the stage. They have to dance. They have to sing along. They have to talk back with you in order to show that they want to be part of the show. It's a great way to get your audience involved. It's one of my favorite ways to do this. In an old band, we actually used to hold a pole dance contest and we would bring up three or four couples and one of them would be the dancer and the other person that was in the couple would be the pole. It got entire groups of people involved in the show and that made the show fun for everyone. That's it for this week. I do hope you enjoyed watching this one. It was a fun one to make. Please, please, please pay attention to how much dead space you are creating at every show and figure out what are the best ways for you to eliminate that as much as possible. It is a crowd killer. So the more you can do to fill or eliminate that dead space in your show, the better off you'll be, the more professional you'll come off. So thanks again for watching. Best of luck to you on your next great performance. Without dead space. And I'll see you soon. Take care.